Renewable energy has seen a global growth rate of more than 45% since 2020. But if humanity ever plans to give up fossil fuels, we're going to need a planet full of batteries to store that clean energy, and using gravity might be part of the solution. That's why today we're checking out what a gravity battery is, how they compare to traditional batteries, and by the end we're going to understand how gravity could play a role in helping us become a type 1 civilization. My name is Christian, and a gravity battery uses the excess energy from the grid to raise an object to generate gravitational potential energy which is then dropped to convert potential energy into electricity. That's a little confusing though, so you can think of this as a game of tug of rope with Earth's gravity. When excess energy is built up, the gravity battery is pulling, but when the energy is needed by cities, the battery starts to let go. In the case of towers like these, when the electric grid has more energy than it needs, these autonomous cranes would use that energy to begin stacking concrete bricks like Legos. And as the energy demand increases, it begins lowering the bricks to generate electricity. The weight of descending objects is often used to spin a turbine, which then generates the usable energy sent through transmission lines. This is really useful because sometimes renewable energy sources create more energy than communities actually need. So instead of letting it go to waste, the idea is that we could store energy for later when the energy demand is high. The concept behind this isn't actually new though. In fact, the first large-scale gravitational storage battery was created using water over 100 years ago in Switzerland. Today, nearly 17% of all the energy generated on Earth comes from pumped hydroelectric sources, or in other words, water falling and spinning a turbine. Although hydroelectric power has a 90% efficiency rate, there are limits to how much can be installed on a river, and that form of energy storage likely isn't as scalable as a battery can be. Now it's time to see which is better, modern gravity batteries or traditional lithium ion batteries. First off, I think it would be best if we knew what gravity batteries have to compete with. Generally, lithium ion batteries consist of metals like lithium, graphite, cobalt, and manganese, which can be shaped to fit into small electronics, cars, and recently can now be used for grid scale energy storage. These kinds of batteries tend to have an impressive efficiency rate of 99% or more, and often are guaranteed to last anywhere from 5 to 15 years. The trade-offs are that materials needed to make them require us to harm the environment by mining metals that may run out around 2100, so not renewable. And those industries also happen to be full of worker exploitation. There is no perfect way to store or generate energy, but let's see how modern gravity batteries stack up to the current leader in energy storage. This crazy looking tower is a certain kind of battery called an energy vault. The company is still young and only started commercial deployment in 2020, meaning few third parties have had the chance to publish studies about its efficiency. But internally, the company claims that these structures have an efficiency of 80 to 90%. Although these batteries aren't as efficient as lithium ion batteries, they're designed in a way that's guaranteed to last around 30 years, according to the company. And that's really awesome because it helps to save on maintenance and replacement costs. Another big selling point for Energy Vault is that they can be constructed right next to where the renewable energy is generated. But until more research is done, I can't help but think that these bricks are going to be swinging in the wind if they're ever installed near a wind farm. And autonomously smashing bricks together all day seems like you'd have a lot of wear and tear costs that they may not be advertising. But they might be well suited for solar farms or urban microgrids if they aren't too noisy. Next up, we have the Gravitricity system, which uses a single weight totaling up to 12,000 tons in a deep shaft underground. Suspended by cables that engage with an electric winch capable of lifting its share of the weight. Electricity is stored in the form of potential energy by raising the weight. Power is then generated by lowering the weight to turn a generator. This system has shown to have an 80 to 90% efficiency rate and is estimated to last around 50 years before replacement is needed. Currently, Gravitricity's deployment strategy relies on repurposing retired mine shafts or water wells, which makes old infrastructure valuable again and reduces costs since the holes are already pre-dug. In addition, a study published last year points out that gravity batteries like this have diversified use cases by providing energy storage for national electrical grids and individual residential homes. Although most gravity batteries opt for a vertically oriented design, a company called Ares has developed the Gravity Line, which helps to store energy horizontally across the land. When cities have more energy than they need, the Gravity Line uses that electricity to propel six-ton rail cars 
uphill against the force of gravity, converting the electrical energy into potential energy. Then as the energy demand increases, the rail cars are released back down the hill, which helps to power a generator that transforms that potential energy back into usable electricity. The first commercial deployment is currently under construction in the state of Nevada and is expected to have an efficiency that's over 90% according to internal estimates. So not only is this design very efficient and scalable, but the gravity line is expected to last around 40 years before replacements are needed. I imagine the biggest challenges for a design like this is land availability, since the system requires a long slanted piece of land to lay the tracks. But thankfully, solar and wind farms tend to be located on large barren fields anyway. With that, we've covered our bases and broke down three of the most common modern gravity batteries. But are any of them better than a lithium ion battery? Well, like all questions dealing with energy storage, the answer isn't clear cut because ultimately the best kind of deployment will vary depending on the needs of a community. Some cities may opt for an energy vault if they're willing to sacrifice efficiency for a cheaper battery that lasts a long time, while other cities or individuals may want to make use of their retired mine shafts and water wells with Gravitricity's winch system. Then for communities that desire scalability or have a lot of unused land, Aries gravity line might make more sense. Efficiency and cost aside, gravity storage also has the added benefit of not requiring massive amounts of mining and hard to recycle materials. So that could be a motivation for more environmentally conscious communities. At the end of the day, I decided not to focus so much on price comparison because many of these gravity battery designs are still new, meaning I can't say how efficient they'll be on a long time horizon and I definitely can't say how cheap they'll be when or if they reach an economy of scale. No matter what the price is though, the climate crisis is rapidly worsening and countries may be forced to use whatever renewable technology they have available, even if it means they have to pay more money for less energy. In the future, we may see a combination of each type though, but there's also the possibility of solid state batteries replacing lithium ion altogether, which honestly warrants its own video. So let me know if you'd like to see that. If you made it to the end of a video about energy storage, I think you're a rare person and someone who likely understands just how important this is if we ever want to live in a sustainable society. Orbiter is all about providing a home for curious people like yourself to answer the hard questions about new technologies and discuss strategies for actively becoming a type one civilization. I have many videos about this, but in short, a type one civilization is a society that has complete control over all the energy sources on its planet. But before we can control that energy, we need a way to store it. Batteries that require finite metals from Earth can only get us so far, and recycling them has its limitations too. So going forward, humanity needs to reimagine our relationship with gravity and begin taking advantage of all this mass that we were fortunate enough to be born on. Thanks for watching, and if you want to support me, you can turn that red button gray down there. And if you're still unfamiliar with what a type one civilization is, you can watch one of these videos right by my head. But anyways, keep orbiting and I'll see you in the next one.